Well, welcome to another RD Works Learning Lab. Um, today we're going to be looking at a, a subject which I've been meaning to tackle for some time, but I've just recently had to do a project for somebody which forced me into looking at this particular problem. Now, I'm doing this job for a friend of mine who runs a hotel, and he was looking for some new tags to put on his room keys. Um, now, the tags are all the same style, all the same shape, but they're not all the same. As you can see, we've got different room numbers, um, and when we look here, we find that some have got horse names on, and some haven't. That's because some of his rooms are actually modified stable block, and he thought it would be a good idea to call them after horses. As you can see, they're all reverse engraved, and everyone is different. So initially I decided to lay a few out on a pattern and just do them as you know four or five at a time. But the problem with that is if something goes wrong they don't cut out or something like that as in this particular instance something went wrong with the cut I've wasted all this time and effort. I decided I was running out of material I better adopt a different strategy and it was a minimum risk strategy basically um, to make sure I use the material in the most efficient way possible. So basically what I did was to cut blanks out to start with. As you can see what I've done, I've cut 10 blanks out of this sheet. Um, and then the problem is, how am I going to locate them so that all these patterns come out exactly the same every time? In other words, I can put the same pattern in exactly the same place because they're a bit of a funny shape. So I got all my blanks out without any problems at all. So then what I had to do was to develop a technique whereby I could locate these and do a repeat pattern on each one of them. Now it did mean to say that I had to develop a program for each one of these labels, but that was no big deal. Let's go and have a look in RD Works at how I have overcome the problem of location. Well I've just imported this uh, DXF file from my CAD system where I laid out um, four of these key fobs to suit a piece of material, an odd piece of material that I had. Now as I've just shown you this is a rather risky strategy because if something goes wrong then I probably lose all of them or at least one or more of them. It's because I had very limited material, just enough material to do the job, I decided to cut all the blanks out first to be sure that I'd got enough to do the job. So let's just take one of these as an example. So the first thing we're going to do is remove those and we'll just work on one of them. Now it's very convenient that I decided that they were all going to be um, engraved. All this text is going to be engraved. So what I can do is I can, I can capture the whole of the image except that little keyhole at the bottom, the ring hole, and I can put those onto a blue layer. My blue layer is a scan layer which I can set the parameters for and uh, we're happy with that. And the black layer is a cut layer, yep. But you will notice something about the cut layer. Is output? No. The first time round I deleted the blue section and just cut the blanks out. I had a pattern laid out with all the blanks on it. So my blanks are already cut, but what I'm trying to do now is to put the pattern onto the blank. And here we are with the pattern in the correct position on the blank. But this time I don't want to cut the blank out, so I've got no output at the top here. So now that I've got this, uh, all of this set as a scan picture, all I've got to do is save it. Before we take it across to the machine, I need to show you two things. First of all, we've got a location up here at the moment, which is the corner location. Now that's not a very sensible place and repeatable place to do a location. I'm going to go up here to config and I'm going to go to system settings. And this is one of those occasions when it is very convenient to use the central position. And you'll notice now that the green dot has jumped right to the middle of the picture. Now, if the outline wasn't there, and let's just delete the outline for a minute, you can see what happens to the green dot. 
it goes off center. So let's just do control Z to put the outline back in. And provided the outline is there, then every time I drop that pattern into the outline, I know that it's going to be in the right place. The only problem is this green dot represents where the head will start. Am I going to guess where the head starts? No. So what I'm going to do now is to develop another little blank setting piece. And we do that simply by taking everything off, like this, delete. I'm going to go over to here and I'm going to draw a circle with my control key down, six millimeters diameter. In fact, I'll move it down a little bit. I'll move it down here because I want you to see something. Now, if you remember back to a long time ago, the second object or the last object that we put down on a page is the object that will become the root object. So what I've done, I've collected those two objects together now, and you'll notice that my green square is no longer in the middle of here. It's actually in the middle of this handled object. Now a line in both the horizontal and the vertical direction, that circle. And that circle has now become coincident with the tool head. Now I've purposely made that circle six millimeters diameter so that I can locate the tip of my nozzle into that hole. Because there's a black layer, I'm going to just change this temporarily to yes, cut, and I'm going to cut it at something in the region of about probably 20 or 25 possibly, and a power of 60. So now I've got both files saved. I've got the horse file saved and I've got my template file saved. And we'll go back out to the machine and see how all this works. When I set the machine up originally um, on the pins, what I did was to make sure that my edge of my sheet was located against these screw threads here, which are the table lifting screws, so that I had a decent reference relative to the axis of the machine. Now what I've done is to remove the pin table now and drop this waste, is what it now is, scrap material, down onto the bed of the table. But I've put it down onto the bed of the table so that it again rests against the screws. So that I know that these are both horizontally and vertically parallel to where they were when the, when the blanks were cut. I've also found a nice heavy piece of metal to hold my piece of material in a nice fixed position. So we're going to put the setting template into a convenient position for us to work with. And there it is, it sits in there nice and snugly. So we'll drive the nozzle to approximately the right position and then we'll raise the table. And I'll raise the table until the nozzle virtually touches. And now I can fairly accurately drive the head into the hole. This is where I need to run the speed quite low. So I'll drop the speed now to around about five millimeters a second. That way when I touch the button, I will get just the smallest amount of movement like that. And I can see that that's central in the backwards and forwards direction. And now in this horizontal position, it looked quite good and of course look it's gone into hovercraft mode yes so I would say now that that nozzle is set up dead central to that template so I make sure I press my origin button now and now I can drop the table down to a sensible distance for engraving when I drop a blank in I know that this is exactly the right position now you'll also note that I've put this piece of metal away from my zero point which is over there so that the head will never come this far across. At the moment that is engraved on the back, I'm now going to engrave on the front the same thing and we'll see what good, how good the registration is. Now a few moments ago we talked about the possibility of using multiple origins on this particular application. I dismissed that and we've gone for a completely different strategy. But I've been thinking about it as this job is going through and wondering just how and why you would want multiple origins. 
Um, there are four of them that you can use, but I, I, I really I'm struggling to think of an application or why or how you would use it. So if there's any pro out there that knows how to use or why you would want to use multiple origins, um, I'd be very pleased to learn. Now, seeing this head going backwards and forwards quite quickly at the moment, it's set on 200 millimeters a second. But there are points in here, and you'll see in a few moments as it gets to the top of the horse's head, um, it starts running at some really stupid speed, and potentially it could put a lot of shake into the machine. And putting shake into the machine means that you could possibly move the work that's sitting on the work table. I mean, if every, if every time it does one of these, it shakes the bed, then by the time we get to number 10, the misregistration could be quite phenomenal. Now, I don't have a problem with this machine shaking. And after this job is finished, I will show you why I don't have a problem with this machine shaking. As I stand here at the moment, leaning on the machine, drinking a cup of coffee, um, there is just the merest amount of kick that I can feel in the machine. It's, it's nothing. I could stand my coffee on here and it wouldn't even notice. But if we now watch here, look. You start getting a few of those and all of a sudden I can imagine the work shaking a little bit on the table. Here we go again. So there's the reason why my machine doesn't shake. I've got it clamped to a very heavy duty workbench. And that's the image we've just put on. So there's one on the back, one on the front, and that looks like perfect registration to me. So there's a technique that you hopefully will be able to use if you are faced with the same problem.